What's going on? Welcome back. In the last video, we talked about enumerating, exploiting, understanding server message block, and we answered the questions. In this video, we're going to go over telnet task 5, 6, 7. Okay, we're going to uh, explain telnet, what it is, in briefly, enumerate telnet, and lastly, we'll exploit telnet. So exploiting telnet, meaning that you will get a reversal back to our attacking machine. All right. So in the section of understanding Telnet, you can see there is a brief intro, but the questions are very simple. You see what is Telnet is an application protocol. It operates on the application layer. Who ha what, ha what has slowly replaced Telnet? Of course, SSH. Why? Because Telnet, uh, as you, all of you know, it transmits communication and everything in plain text. So it is not secure anymore. It doesn't, it doesn't implement encryption. And this is the command, and this is what Tunnelet lacks. Okay, now we get to the enumeration of Tunnelet. Make sure you deploy the machine. And here we have the questions and answers. We're going to answer them, but of course, we're going to first see what is the methodology for enumerating Tunnelet. So basically, we have a machine. We scan the machine, dash A, aggressive scan, dash SV, for um, enumerating the versions, dash B, all ports. So as you can see, we have only one open port, AC12, and it's not very clear what uh, this port is doing here, right? We don't know. It's not clear. It's saying fingerprint strings, and we have some stuff here. And if we go down, we can see Skiddy's backdoor. So it seems like this port is used to connect to the machine remotely by Skiddy. So we have Skiddy, and Skiddy has a backdoor um, to connect to the machine. So there is something running on this port, but yet we don't know what it is. Okay. Now, if you encounter this situation during an engagement, so one way to discover and find out what, is, what does this port do, or what is function, we can say sudo telnet and the name of the machine or the IP of the machine is this one. Put the IP and put the port 80. Now we connect. So if you are able to, we are able to connect now. So this board is used for telnet communication. So the Skiddy, this guy would issue this command as a telnet client to connect with the telnet server. And here we can type help to see the comments. Nothing shown. Okay. So now let's get back to the questions here and see what we can we need to answer. So how many ports are open on the target machine? One. What port is this? 8012. This port is unassigned, but still lists the protocol it is using. What protocol is this? Let's get back and see. So clearly it is TCP. Now, read on the in-map scan without the dash p dash tag, how many ports show up as open? Without doing this, you're going to get zero open ports. Why? Because when you scan with all ports, it's going to scan all ports, including the ports, the, co the most commonly used ports, 1024 and below and above. When you cancel this tag, it will scan only the one, the most commonly used ports, 1024 and below. So. Uh, this indicates that the answer would be zero. Now here, as you can see, based on the title returned to us, what do you think this port could be used for? So, as we saw earlier, it was for backdoor. Let's get back to output. So here it is backdoor. But we have string here, so we might have a backdoor. Who could it belong to? Is the username Skiddy? Now, also keep a note of the information. Right, so that's the enumeration phase. Very simple, easy. Now the exploitation phase. So as you can see here, we have the questions and some brief about the, or some intro about the task. So. Okay, now we got to find a way to exploit Telnet. 
But basically, the way you do that, now let's get back. Since the help command hasn't returned any output for us, okay, we don't know what to run here, right? So as you can see, the syntax is dot run command execute commands. So it's saying in order to run commands on the system, you have to follow this formula or this syntax dot run and the command you want. So what we would try here, we would say, for example, to try something on the machine and to make sure we can receive, uh, we can we can uh, execute commands. What we would do here, we would open a new uh, window or a new session, new command, whatever it is. And let's say sudo tcp dump. We want to listen on the communications between our client, which is our machine, and the Telnet server. How we do that, we will just run tcp dump and ping, execute ping on the target machine using the Telnet session we have already established. So tcp dump IP protocol. The protocol would be, uh, of course, don't forget that it operates on ICMP, so we paste here with that ICMP-I, and of course our IP address. Our IP address, let's find the IP, new tab, hit config. No such device. Oh, so we just need to put the interface. So what interface this IP is running on? TUN0. TUN0. Okay, now we are listening. So in order to capture the communication, we have to get back to the tenlet here and issue some ping command. Okay, the ping command, if executed, we will receive the output here in the TCP dump since we are listening uh, on the ICMP protocol here. Okay. Now the syntax is dot run and ping. We ping our IP address. And send like five packets. So as you can see, one, two, three, four, five. We are receiving the packets back to our machine. Why? As said earlier, we have established the listener, TCP dump, to capture the communication on the interface, TUN0, and the protocol is ICMP. And by issuing the ping command on the Telnet server, we make sure that we are able to execute commands on the system with the Telnet server we have already got access to. So what's next? Next is creating a payload and executing that payload in on the Telnet server. So what we would do here, we would say sudo msf venom. And of course, we have to determine the operating system. So from the initial uh, evaluation here, we would see it is, um, there's no estimation on the operating system. All right, so let's see if there is some given data about this. So it's saying use Unix in the payload. So basically, you can use Unix payload. So it means that the system is Linux, dash P, CMD, Unix, reverse, netcat, lhost is your IP address. And port four five four five, and R means that we need the payload in a row format in order to copy it. Hit enter. All right, so here you go. This is the payload that we need to execute. 
So we take this as is. Of course, don't forget to establish the listener sudo rlrab and c dash lvp four five four six five. And here we type dot run and the comment. Let's see. Okay, so we receive the connection here. Type id no down there. So we are root on the system. Of course, in a typical scenario, you will not be root, right? You will be something like dub dub data. No, sorry, dub data for the web servers. You'll be something like Skiddy, some other user, and you will escalate your privileges from uh, from there. Okay. Now let's get back and answer the questions. Great, it's an open tenant connection. What welcome message do we receive? Let's get back. What welcome message have we received when we first connected? Skiddy is back there. Oh, no. Let's try executing some commands. Do we get a return on any inputs we enter into the telnet session? No. As you can see, we typed help, help, but you haven't received nothing. So we type no. That's strange, fine. Start a distant bit, we did that. Now use the command ping through the telnet session to see if we are able to execute system commands. Do we receive any pings? Of course we have received. Completed. What word does the generated payload start with? So when, when you have generated the payload, you will see that it starts with MK FIFO. So MK FIFO. This is to make sure that you have generated the payload correctly. What would the command look like for the listening port we selected in our payload? Here it's asking, when you have generated the payload, you need to establish a listener first before connecting or before executing the payload on the target machine. So it would be dash uh, LVP 4546. No, it are, in, in their case, it is 4544. So we type this. Completed. What is the content of the flag? Let's get back and find the flag. ls cat flag txt. And this is the flag. That was for Telnet. Now what's left is FTP and we are done with the network services. So basically what we have gone through here, as you can see, there is a Telnet server running on port 8012. Uh, we, are, we were able to connect that tunnel server here, as you can see. But the thing is, or the problem with that tunnel server is, it executes commands on the system without any uh, control or any restriction. So basically, that's the problem. And we, well, I don't recommend using tunnelnet uh, because tunnel is not recommended uh, for security purposes. As you can see, all the communication are transferred in the clear text, as we have captured in the TCP dump. So instead of Telnet, you would use SSH to connect your system remotely. That was for today. I hope you like this and see you in the next video.